We're out to find broken, useless websites and give them a purpose to grow your business. Okay, in this next segment, uh, we're gonna make our second pass at the design of this website. And we, we've done a little more research. We found some icons. Uh, we've, we actually found one of the customer's videos. Uh, we'll be able to use that. Um, so we really, we, we've done some research and we've gathered up some pieces and we wanna put those and add those to this design. So we really wanna bring this uh, design to life. So this is gonna be our second pass at this and we just wanna keep pushing ourselves to make this really pop out. Uh, so I did one thing uh, here is I took off, I made the, this Divi template a blank template. So instead of the default, I changed it to blank and it got rid of the, the logo and the header and everything at the top. Um, I believe you can, I've made a separate video, a little 60 second video about that before. Um, so you can look that up if you want to. Um, so anyway, I wanted to start here and I want to start applying some of the new design elements uh, and change other changes that we have in mind. So let's get started with uh, doing those. And we're really going to start right here at the top with this background image. Although I do like it, I believe the customer would be really impressed uh, if he could see his video on there. So. Uh, we're going to go straight into the settings of this section here and we're going to go to background and over on the right side we can see that there's a fourth tab this is for the video you click on add background video and here's our video now a couple of quick notes about the video the, this video is 16 seconds long uh, we use QuickTime just the default QuickTime on the on our Mac computer and we was actually able to remove the audio as well and that saved us a little over another 100 kilobytes so there's a couple of very specific parameters here uh, one is you want to try to keep it around to 10 12 seconds um, our video is 16 seconds you know just a tad over four seconds over the ideal length uh, but that's because this video actually makes a loop um, from as it's uh, the video plays the waterfall actually changes colors so we wanted to show a complete cycle from purple all the way back to purple so that's we allowed that to go to 16 seconds uh, okay so there's no audio in the sound uh, it's 15 16 seconds long and we just saved it out as an MOV uh, you know this is specifically asking for an MPEG-4 but uh, the MOV is using MPEG-4 for you know compression technology okay so cool that's gonna pop in and you can already see that it's starting to play um, it moves around a little bit I think that's okay it kind of lets you know that it's like a live video um, and then you can see the waterfall colors changing okay so that's there and but on the mobile we we don't want to show the video so there's a under background there's a little mobile icon at the top we're gonna to click that and then we're gonna to go to the video tab and we're actually gonna delete the video from there uh, we want it to play on the desktop so it looks like it unassigned it so let me, let me reassign it to the desktop version okay okay so now it's assigned to the desktop version the tablet I think it will be okay so we'll leave that on the tablet version and then on the mobile version again we'll want to delete that there uh, that should leave it on our desktop okay it's just taking a second I can see it here it's just not updating the screen so that's okay so we know that it's set up correctly so on the mobile what I want to do is come over I want to remove this photo and add the just the a still photo of the video and so I exported a photo of it of the video I have here so that it'll just be a static photo of the video okay and we'll save that okay. so I'm gonna go down and save our page we should see that photo go away so let's double check our settings background you can see the video is applied here so I'm gonna go over the photo I'll make sure I delete that off of there that's why it's still showing and then on the tablet we should have a video no no image and on the mobile 
we should have no video and a static image. I'll save that again. I'm going to exit out of the visual builder and there it is. So it's just kind of a preview thing that it's not working while we're in edit mode and that's probably a good thing because it would be kind of difficult to to edit while it's trying to stream this video. So you can see there, there's what we wanted to achieve. So now we've got a video background. Uh, it's moving around a little bit and I'm okay with that because that lets me know that this is a video and not a static picture and I can see the waterfall changing colors. It's going from blue to the purple and then it'll jump and start over to red. Okay, so this is looking great. So let's go back into enable visual builder. All right? And so the other thing that's going on here is since we removed the menu at the top we don't have the logo on the screen and I really want to make the logo big so we got to figure out how we're going to get that on here and make it look great uh, we have these text modules here um, but then so let's add the logo to this other side I already I, sh I made the logo small earlier so I'm gonna have to go back and and grab that logo one more time and before I upload it so here's the original logo it's really big uh, so this is the preview program here. I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Uh, I just click on this little pin tool up here and I get more tools and then I click the the expansion or uh, adjust size icon and then I can put in the size I want and you can see this is really too big for the website. So even if I fill this whole area over the side usually a half column is about 550 pixels wide. That's still going to be really really big. Um, so I think we can get something down to about 350 pixels, uh, which would still be pretty big. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good size that we can put on there. And then I want to make sure that there should be no background. I don't believe there's a background on here. It's all knocked out. So I'm going to save that one. and then we're going to re-upload that to our library so that's 164 kilobytes that's that's actually pretty big but let's see what that looks like uh, sometimes it's a process of um, adding things and then scaling them down and resizing them to to get the right size that you need uh, okay so this is this is pretty amazing uh, it's transparent we can see right through it it's big um, I don't like that it's covering up the waterfall so much so let's just figure out what we can do here what if we made this three columns uh, that shrinks down the logo a little bit and then let's put Let's actually put the logo in the left column and move this text over. So we're just gonna kind of play around this until we really get this the way we want it. Okay, so the 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 text is you can see through it, so you can see the colors a little bit better, but it's too small, too small. So let's go to like a one third, two third, so our text can stretch back out and that's already looking a lot better we could even scale down our logo a little bit more uh, just to get things kind of proportional so let's see what that would look like if we just scale that down a little bit more sizing so if it was about the same height as our text and center it okay that's starting to really come together so uh, we can still see the big door vineyards in the background uh, 
so that's okay that's part of the lighting but it's not behind his logo so there's no conflict there um, so this is looking really good so let's save this this is much more dynamic the logo is much bigger it's more definitely more dramatic okay so I'm gonna exit out of this again just so I've saved and exited and make sure that's got and let's go over and I'm gonna open up another tab and go to the dashboard and one of the things I was really struggling with last you know earlier in the first draft is just the color scheme just it was just very flat in monochromatic um, it needs to be more dramatic so I found this uh, you know, so a quick shout out to Tara, uh, one of our graphic designers. She said that I need to, you know, match up the purple, and so she had found that that fountain. Um, that's how we found the video. The customer had mentioned this video, um, which saying that um, on Facebook he's really using that purple color. So we want to use that purple color that's in the fountain video. We want to pull that out and actually use it on the um, uh, as the button color. So we're going to try that and see what that looks looks like. I found some other colors as well. I'm, I was looking at um, greens and maybe even blues and grays. So I've been looking at different colors to try to figure out how we can make this palette more dynamic. Um, so let's add, so instead of this gray out here, let's put in that purple color. And so we'll have to save that here. And in order for it, us to see this update, this color palette, uh, that's why I exited out. So now if we enable the Visual Builder after we've saved that, hopefully that purple color has been added into our database and we can now use that from our, our palette to be able to sign it. So right here on our button, and it would be great if we actually saved this into our library. So we're going to call this um, Outdoor Living Consultation button. We'll make this one global. We'll save it to our library. So now, if we if we have any other changes, then it'll be global. Um, however, we edited our but our button in the theme customizer. So I'm going to go back over to the other tab and go to the theme customizer and edit the button color there instead of on the page. So that actually should change the color of the button of all the buttons on the page to that purple. So here we have a preview here. Here's that um, you know taupe or clay color. Here there's our pop purple and that really pops out. Um, it's it's kind of a dark purple so black is not really working for us. So let's see what that looks like when the text goes white. That definitely looks better. Now we don't have an option here. Yeah we do. We have a bold option here. And I'm okay with bold if it's not a heading. So if this is a paragraph text, you know, in term in HTML terms, then I think bolding this um, will m make it more distinct. Um, so you can see how that really pops out now. It really kind of punches you in the eye, and that's that's kind of what we want. We want this button to be uh, pretty obnoxious. I mean, we want it to be the brightest thing on the page. Okay, so we're going to publish our purple button. Uh, we need to check our, so you can see how it's it's changed the button on all the pages, right? Or all throughout the page. So now let's check our, whoops, I hit the exit button. We wanted to check our, um, our hover state for the button. So we're going to go back in, go to buttons, hover style. Okay, so when you hover it now, it just goes to white and black. Um, you know, I think I'm I think I'm good with that now. So let's leave that as the way it is. And so now we've got a very bright button on the page. Uh, to see our changes again here, we'll have to exit the Visual Builder and then come back in, and then we can see those updates from the Theme Customizer because we're working in two different tabs uh, to make those changes. We'll have to kind of refresh this page. All right, 
I can already tell this is this is a lot more dramatic than what we had before. Um, we see some little issues. This text here is really small and it's getting lost back there. So we need to try to make this text really pop out. So it's got to be bigger. It's got to be bolder. It's got to. And also, we could put a shadow on it. That'll help separate it. So let's go to the design. We're going to text. And we'll just increase the font on this. Okay, so that's 27. I think 27 is really mobile, more mobile friendly. Again, this is a paragraph text, so we we could bold that without any any penalty from from Google. Uh, I see italicized uppercase. Oh, so they moved it up to weight. So if we go to a bold. Okay, I'm not seeing any changes there. Might be because of the, the font doesn't support it. So let's see if we can add a shadow to that. You instantly you can see like where there's there's a light background when I add the shadow it definitely increases so then usually the shadow is set to like um, 40 percent so I like to to make it just as dark as possible just to get as much contrast behind the lettering as I can alright so that's standing out a whole lot more it's a lot more readable now the fonts at the top are we're already kind of bold so now everything is a lot more readable than it was before and it definitely jumps out okay so our header is really starting to take shape and so let's move on to our next section here I've got some ideas here to, to really jazz this up uh, again the color palette is kind of blah so we're gonna see if we can uh, we can do something different with this um, we really kind of need to stick with these gray tones or the Adobe. Uh, we're going to reserve the purple only for the buttons. So if we just have grays and the Adobe color, uh, we could put that in the center. So the center one could be, could make that one. So I'll go to the gear, click on the gear for the column, background. Okay, so that's the, the logo color there, I believe. And then if I go back to the first column, uh, so here's here's a black. Um, but let's go. Let's see what we can do with the gradients. So the idea here is that if we could do a radial gradient, and then we're going to offset it to the top, and then we want to use the colors, and we really just want to use black and white here. So. We're going to set this one to black. Uh, let's see, we'll set that one to white. No, we need like a gray. So uh, we're going to pick black and then we're just going to go to a shade lighter. And then the other one we'll set to black again and we'll let it be full black. So now we have like this illusion of a, of a light source coming from above, which is really cool. Okay, so we're going to we're going to save that and then our next little trick is we want to see if we can we want to see if we can add a light icon to the top of this column which would be super cool. So I found a little um, or made a little image icon. Let's see, did I Okay, I didn't upload it yet. So let me upload that for us. So this is kind of a outdoor Viking lamp, if you will, and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. So we're gonna we're gonna try to put this here. Okay, so there's our little light, and we want to get it next to our light source, <laughs> so that it looks like the light's coming from the actual image itself. So we're gonna go to center that up, 
and then we're gonna move it to the top of the content here and so this is gonna be tricky we might have to play around a lot with this um, but we'll see if we can put this use some padding or margin and do some negative margin to lift this up okay so now we have this little light fixture at the top and uh, with the text underneath it and we have this radial gradient coming away from the light on the back I'm going to delete this little divider on the bottom just so that it's cleaner and simple and then also the the text is not quite coming across not not quite making sense so instead of uh, no friends we want to just kind of state you know I just want to make it more make more sense with a different phrase so really what he does is outdoor living space so you could have parties with your friends um, outdoors you know outdoors may become a you know key phrase here so this is this is what you potentially he his customers miss it out miss out on party with friends outdoors you know so that's kind of the goal here all right, so this is looking good. So we're gonna take this and I wanna replicate it for these other ones. So this particular style, so we'll have to go back into the gear. And so this is the first column. Opening up the sec settings, I can see the three columns here. On the far right, there's a triple dot uh, and extend item styles to this to this row and then I click extend boom we did it so now we've got now we've got this kind of repeating across I thought we might might do with the center one in, in clay but you know this actually looks really good just as it is so now let's duplicate our light fixture and then drag a copy of it to the next column and then we'll do that again duplicate grab it by the little move tool and drag it to the next column and again we're deleting these little dividers now because we have something that's cooler and uh, you know so the idea here with the lurking animals was really about um, being able to see your, your strange animals wild animals like that are in the bushes <laughs> So the concept behind that is is no dark corners. So that's what we're going to change it to. And then the last one here is about keep being having visibility on your pet. It's really about protecting your pet. So we're going to change this text as well. Protecting or protect, protect your pet. So the only one, so this is three words, but this one is four words. So if there's any way we can shorten this up, it would really kind of come together. This might be a little bit strange, but we'll try it. Outdoor friend, outdoor friend parties or outdoor parties. I think that friends kind of applies, right? <laughs> if you're having a party outside, you know, you're probably going to do it with friends. So outdoor parties. Um, so it looks like I had some styles on this one. So let's copy the styles of this one and extend st text styles on this row as well so that they line up better that's looking really well I feel like this is this, these boxes are really too big and I'd like to shrink them down uh, so let's see if we have the spacing or sizing set
So I don't know if that was what was controlling it. So let's check the row. Um, you know, and this is kind of the challenge sometimes when you grab a pre-made layout, you're not sure exactly how, um, you know, they, they did some of these things. Um, so I don't see any height set here, but I'm going to, I'm just going to punch it in and see if I can get it to move. So I did see something move that time. So let's go to 150. And we'll go back to, okay, so we can see our row is a lot shorter than the actual. And the section is shorter. So our style must be on somewhere else. So that's about two about 225 really looks like where we want to be so there's a little difference when you're hovering over these uh, if you get the arrows with the bar in the middle uh, then that changes your minimum heights you know which I just did manually a minute ago and if you get just to the two arrows then you'll be adjusting the margin So since the green the row box is on top of the section box, it's a little difficult to get there. So we'll just go to the settings, uh, design, sizing. So 225 is about what we want. Okay, but there's still something that's pushing pushing this out so let's check the so we let's check the individual columns to see what the uh, the spacing is there Okay, so that's where it is. It's set and it's set to a percent as well. So if we go down to five percent, and then we'll extend those item styles to the rest of the row. Okay. And magically we have a little white line that's appeared. Um, so it looks like it's coming from the section below. So we'll just pull some margin up on that. Oh, I love the overlap. That wasn't intentional. But now the lamps are overlapping the header on the top, which is kind of cool. So it gives us a really nice overlap overlap between the sections it pulls it together and we've got this gradient in the background that looks like a light that looks like the lights being shown shown on the wall from that light fixture which is really cool cool and it really looks 3d so I think we've adjusted our tax I think this section is looking really phenomenal this is just really out of the box uh, kind of stuff that we wouldn't really keep pushing towards are you frustrated with trying to write content for your website learn the web design software, and overcome all the technology challenges to get the website launched? We understand what it's like to spend hours writing, designing, and launching a website. Don't waste your time and money on something that you don't enjoy. We can easily walk you through an affordable process of creating a web design with a purpose. You will be stress-free and feel like a successful business person. All you have to do to get started is visit shepherdsloft.com and book a free web design with a purpose appointment. Uh, the next section here, uh, this is a message. This box in a box is really kind of not his style. So we're really going to have to work hard to get this the way uh, the way we, that we want it. Um, 
So let's look at some notes here to see what we can do to make this better. I think we can see the the deck pretty well, um, but if we could go to if we could just make it half and half, I think. So I think this is the Adobe color, which is nice. Okay, but if we took off all the spacing out and we just made it seamless. So edge to edge. Okay, so we remove the the margin and padding on the top. Uh, let's see on the background here. So let's see if we can make this row go all the way across. So we'll go to settings, design, okay, sizing. And you can see the width is 80%. So what if we went 100? And then in this max width, we have to do the same thing. We have to go, uh, we have to program both of them. So if we tell that one 100%, now our box is going all the way to the edge of the page. Uh, okay. So now the background. the image is not showing all the way so there's something going on there and we want to kind of box this off so let's look at the the sizing and the spacing okay this is all set to default so let's look at the spacing oh I see some top right here so let's just reset this to zero Okay, so now our top has that little line back, so we, which we want to get rid of. So we'll have to just play around with the uh, the spacing until we get that where we want it. Sometimes deleting, so those are set to zero, so we, we need those. Okay, so all right, so we can add a couple of pixels of margin there to adjust that out, so that's good. So now we've got it seamed to seam, we got it edge to edge now, which is great. I like bringing that Adobe Color back in. Uh, it might have been nicer if it's, it was on the other side but it's actually programmed into the into the column so now our background image is not full so let's check where we have that background image applied okay so it's not here it's not on the row settings so let's check our column which it shouldn't be here that's the color so that means it's probably going to be on our on our section so we'll go to the section background image so there's our image that we're using cover so let's check our sizing and spacing okay there's nothing there check the spacing okay we got all zeros there okay so so the padding made a big difference there So there's a setting in there I'm missing somewhere. Okay. But that's okay. We may not even use that background image because we want to just put one big one in here. So let's remove it from from there. 
and let's just place it in the column on the right there's our minimum height adjustment right there so if we actually delete that it should go back to auto okay so on the right column so we're going to go to the row settings for the right column. This is where we want to put the other background image. And so we'll click on image and then let's find that that image that we like. Uh, maybe even a vertical one might even be nicer. Here's a vertical image. And so you'll, you'll notice that it doesn't, so this is the right column. Uh, let's see, so actually I think we wanna assign it. Let's check, so this is really kinda confusing. So on the row settings, if you scroll down, there's a background, but then if you go into the actual column, there's a background as well. Uh, and if there's a color, over top of it then it won't show up so you gotta make sure so you have to check all of them really and then also if the if the column is empty you may have to add We may have to add something in that column. So you can see the image is showing up now. So if we just did an empty text box, and this is a little weird, we shouldn't have to do this, but we need something in there that's gonna act as a placeholder. Uh, okay, so then we're gonna set this one to 100%. I don't think it likes the um, percent. Okay, so there's 100 pixels. There's 225. Okay, so that's 400 pixels there. Okay, and I see what's going on. So there's a gutter between these two columns. So if we go to design, sizing, use custom gutter, and then just slide this to zero or one. And now you can see that this is seamless together, which is what we want. Now all we gotta do is get our left one to be the same height. Uh, so, so in the row settings, there actually should be in um, equalized column heights. It was just below what we just turned on. So using the custom gutter width and the equalized column heights, now the two of these columns are the same height. And I know this is completely different from where we started, but but I I really love this uh, the, this lighting. It's back to back to this text. Um, so we could even go with a darker color, um, but I really wanted to use this Adobe color. We need some spacing under here though. So I'm gonna add some, or some padding to that one. 
I'd rather use some margin if possible. So we can build some margin out of that. Uh, and then let's align this to the right side instead. Okay, so our alignment, so there's the button to the right. And then here's our text. And this text could, could be bigger as well. So let's go to design, text. We're gonna align it to the right. We're gonna to go to body text. And then we're going to scale this up some so that it balances out better. And then so we just need to do the title, design, heading text. It's a heading two. We have to click on heading two, then we can assign it to align right. So that we've got everything here except for our divider, but I got some a new idea for that. So instead of using this little bar, let's let's use something fun. Uh, so let's go to image and then go to our media library by clicking on the gear. And I've uploaded some of these icons. Uh, it would be nice if we had something a little more horizontal. Um, so we've got this. This is called a fault knot. So we can we can try that one here. Uh, and we're going to need, definitely need to get, scale it down. Uh, we're going to change the alignment to center and then go to sizing. And for now, I'll probably come back later and, and scale it correctly, but I just kind of want to get an idea of what's going on. So there's 7%. That's kind of an odd number. 5%. That's really small. But it's kind of nice. Ten percent is kind of big. Let's go with bigger. Ten percent. Okay. So now what would be really tricky if we could get this divider design line. So let's make this. Let's make this a black color or maybe a gray. And then we're gonna go to spacing. And I'm gonna I want to move this right up behind the falcon nut if I can. Um, so then also, let's see if we can change the width. So here's the line, solid, vertically centered. Transform. Okay, it's visible. There's no link. There's no background. Okay. Sizing. There's the weight. The width. Ah, max width, 50 pixels. So at 100% it comes all the way across. So let's center that module. So the the line is over top. So we either have to make two lines on one on each side, or which would be like quite a bit of work or we can just put the, the line underneath. So we'll go back to the sizing, or let's just check our spacing, and just see if we can move it back down. So it's getting there. It's creating a contrast, um, but it's but it's not quite it's not quite working. 
um, so it's either too big or you know the line is just too much um, so we could just remove the line completely Uh, but the thing is that this icon is centered when everything else is aligned to the right. So we may have to just center everything here. So let's do that. So let's see what centered will look like for us. It's good to have plans, but it's also good to to make adjustments and compromise or or go with the flow when you have to. So uh, this is pretty big, actually. I think that let's just drag that on top, see what it looks like. You know, this that creates a lot of negative space up here, which is kind of kind of nice. Um, and even if we add some more space in the bottom to match it, then to me that kind of is, is more balanced. That looks pretty nice. All right, so let's keep this section looks good. We got our purple button. We're using the logo colors. We've added in uh, this piece here. Uh, we didn't use any texture in that section, but that's okay. Uh, let's get down to the next section and we're gonna have to do something very similar with this section that we did the last section I'm gonna go ahead and save this so I think if we did a specialty section here and was able so this is a 50 50 we have three columns up here we've got two columns here uh, but if we could do a one-third two-third and then break the two-third into uh, multiple uh, images image blocks over here I think that would look really great so let's see if we can pull all that together so I'm gonna do a specialty section here and you can see we've got these are half and half okay and uh, this one is this one's like a quarter but this one down here is like a third a one-third two-third and then we can do multiple we can do a, a two by two over here so let's let's start working with this one okay and then the we will put our text well see on this one actually we should reverse it over because on this section we've got the text on the left side if we are rotating over we should put the we should put the text on the right side on the next one so let's pick the opposite specialty section uh, which is this one here with the one-third on the right and then I'll delete this one okay so I think this will work better so we'll take this this text here put it in this box over here all right and then we're gonna have two rows over here but we want these to be full width just like we did at the top up here I'm gonna duplicate this box here and put it in this square okay so the background color let's go with let's go with the darker color the black or near black So here's black, but then let's just draw that up. And we could also, actually what might even work better for us is to do some type of gradient again here. So here's the, the black on the top, which we could go more gray. And on the bottom, we could go with the black, dark black, and then linear we can change the direction here so that it's coming from maybe more from the right side where the text is 
And we also could change our starting position that brings it down. Really, I think what we want to do is bring our finish position in a little tighter. So now you can see there's kind of a there's a a grade of black gradient over in this area because we're going to fill the left side with pictures. Okay, so that's pretty subtle. We like that. All right now, let's see. So let's put our title on top. Okay, and again, this is a specialty section, so we have we don't actually have a row here. These are just modules sitting in that column, and then on the left side, we can have multiple rows. Okay, so we've got one. I don't know. I thought we had two there. Might have lost the other one. So again, I want to make it seamless. So it's going to be seam to seam. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. I may have an extra one in there somewhere. And then we'll change the height of our module, empty module box. So this is at 400. So let's do. Uh, so on two thirds, 50% um, is about 550. So one third is going to be. Uh, it's going to be 330 plus another 30, so it's going to be about 360 uh, on the width. So this is just a little bit too big. So we'll, if we bring this down to 350, uh, let's see if that that'll work a little closer for us. Okay. We don't have a lot of text here, so um, but we could add in a little icon at the top. So I'm gonna I'm gonna duplicate this one, bring it in over here. Looks like it's trying to drop in that other box. I can see it highlight. Ah, there we go. Okay, it's underneath here. Let's bring that up. It's pretty small because it's scaled down in this in this particular box. Well, let's see if we can reverse that out. So if we go to filters, there's an inverse option here, so we can make it white. And then if we go to sizing, this it was at 10%, but we can make that bigger. And then on the spacing. Uh, let's see. So the top, I, the the margin seems to be a little more cross browser compatible. So let's do let's do a hundred on that, and that'll give us more space in there. And then let's get some space between our title and text. Now we've got more room to work with on our box here. And okay, so on the left side, let's make our rows 100% like we did once before. So we'll go to design. Let's see, we start with sizing. Um, yeah, I think we did 100% here. And we copy that, paste it into the width, custom gutters, gutter width one equalize columns so that should get our should get us started here oh, not quite okay so we missed something design sizing width maximum width minimum height spacing Okay, so let's check our settings in the specialty layout. Inner width, 
in our max width yeah there it is so the section was controlling the inner width and inner max that's why we couldn't get our row to go all the way to the edge so now that it's going all the way out you know, we'll have to bring it back in a little bit for this right column but really what we wanted to be able to do is get this row here to be seam to seam okay so we're really doing a lot of this from scratch I mean we, we might could have found a section that kinda was already designed the way we want to do it but that's okay this is a good exercise to understand where these settings are and how we can do this so in the so in this first row on the left column uh, we wanna pick a an image to be in the background here so let's just let's just find one we may end up changing it several times but let's just find one we like for now um, I like the I think the ones we use below with the fire pit was one um, so there that one fills that block and then it might be nice if the one next to it was a daytime photo so if we go to column 2 settings background image let's find a brighter picture to contrast that one okay so here's one of exterior of the rail okay all right so I'm going to delete this row uh, just so we can duplicate this one again so we can start to get a feel of what this is going to look like and then we want to reverse out so even with this one we may want to well I don't really mess with too much with his uh, his photos I was gonna say we could put an overlay on it um, so we can try that and see what it what that would look like so on the row settings this is the left column background um, so here's our image and if we change that to 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 screen and then we go to the gradient section we can apply our gradient again so again we're going to start with black and it might be fun if this one was purple um, that might be kind of crazy uh, so let's look at look at that uh, we can bring the opacity down on that on the bottom just so that it has kind of a tint to it let's see and the top is black so we can do maybe a shade of that or maybe even reverse it so we that's the thing is we have to just keep tinkering until we get it the way the way we want it so what if this one was purple? Oh, that looks kind of different. That's, that's almost like the dark is purple. Like the night is purple. And then the light part of the picture is, is black. So if we do white, then it totally shines out the deck. If we go as Adobe Color, It's really kind of subtle. So, but the purple is definitely, definitely stylish. Um, however, we're, we are trying to reserve the purple for our button. So, let's backtrack on that idea and go back to the black. So, this is the left column, background, gradient, change that to black. And then on the right side, that's just adding some warmth to the picture you can see how the wood kind of just warms up a little bit so I think that adds value to the picture instead of taking it away so that's about 50% 51 so we'll save that that's kind of a neat little overlay most people you know would not even know that that's there but you can see the difference between this picture and that picture how warmer that is um, okay so on this one we want to reverse it right so we want a kind of a bright picture on the left side so on the left column, let's pick a background picture that's maybe something a little bit more 
in the daytime. Uh, I like this one here, so let's try this one. Then we go back up, and then we go to the right column. Then we can change that photo to something that's you know of the nighttime. Um, I've been picking a lot from this deck here. It'd be nice to pick something different. We have the fountain here that's from the front, um, or even this pool. Again, if we could apply some some gradients to this, maybe maybe we can enhance it a little bit. But we have to change the background image blend to to either screen or multiply. Let's do screen. Back to the gradient. So the gradient on the bottom. Oh, this is the one on top. Okay. So. The one on the right is the one on the bottom. This is what it looks like here. So if we do the black, that's all the way up. Alright, so coming into this section, we've got our, you know, I kind of don't really like that black. I think if we inverse this one out, I think it would look cleaner. So let's, you know, every time I see that, I think that it should be a different color. So we'll go to our filters and then go to invert. We'll reverse that one out. That kind of looks a little cleaner, um, just like we did here. Um, so now we've got a good kind of a portfolio going of night pictures and day pictures so we just need some spacing on the section over here and we may have to do that in our section settings so let's pull that up we're going to go to design and let's see i'm not even sure what we're going to have to go here sizing Actually, let's go to our, these are centered, okay, which is good, but maybe they need some, okay, not sure what I did there. There seems to be some spacing here on the left side but not on the right side so there's something that's that's kind of throwing it out of alignment oh, now this is convenient so we can grab just the right side and pull it in let's pull it in about 80 pixels and that will kind of center up that right side column that looks remarkable okay we're not going to add a purple button here. We've kind of kind of splash a purple there. Um, we've already got you know two calls to actions, so we can skip this one. Um, so this is well, actually here it is right here. So this is the section we really just kind of replace. So I'm just going to delete that now. That's it for this episode. Join us in the next episode when we finish our second pass of the homepage and we make our mobile adjustments. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.